St. Louis, a major city with culture in the arts and fantastic sports teams to boot. Despite our storied history of music, when the average person thinks of a music city, they think of L.A. or Chicago or New York. Musicians move away from St. Louis all the time, trying to make it in a completely different region. Where is the St. Louis music scene in 2023? What's the culture? Who are the people? Why should you get involved and experience live music? Today, I'll be interviewing three bands. We'll be seeing three moments in history and three stories of the St. Louis local music scene. Who knows, you might just learn to love St. Louis a little bit more. But first, let's talk St. Louis music history. Do you mind? Let me put in this tape. You know, there's a whole mess of very famous influential artists from St. Louis, like the famous Chuck Berry, alternative rock band The Urge, one of the best jazz trumpeters of all time, Miles Davis, original rocker and blues man Big Joe Turner. Who could forget his 1954 hit Shake, Rattle, and Roll? We've even got a whole St. Louis symphony. How crazy is that? Here they are going at it. And of course, the inevitable Nelly Baby. Now with all these famous influential artists from St. Louis, you might be wondering why isn't St. Louis considered a music city? A lot of popular St. Louis music culture has been shut down over the years, like Gaslight Square, a famous place for jazz clubs in the 50s and 60s. Due to white flight and poor upkeep, a lot of these cultural landmarks are not preserved today. Now that we've touched on the past, let's focus on the present. I'm currently headed to Off-Broadway, a St. Louis music venue great for touring and local bands alike, to see the local shoegaze slash alternative band 9 Volt play. After some light entertainment, you'll be treated to an exclusive interview with the band about the St. Louis music scene. Dig in. Hey guys. <laughs> hey guys. Pull the garment. I started, uh, wanted to start making music because my dad's a musician and I've been around music my whole life. And I think it's honestly the only thing I'm good at. And uh, I just love music. I don't know, I just listen to a lot of it. Um, for me, honestly, I was just really bored. And so I decided to pick up guitar. And then right after playing guitar, I realized it's really the only thing I ever was happy doing. <laughs> And so I just didn't stop playing guitar for probably like two years until right now. Okay, so when I was younger, I got really into bands like Nirvana, uh, Pixies, Dinosaur Jr. and stuff like that. And I saw videos of them playing live and I was playing drums at the time a lot. And I was like, I could really do something with this. And so when Carlos started playing guitar, it kind of came together on its own. Yeah, so right after me and Sam decided we want to start a band, we were like, well, we need someone else to play with us. And so we went to like the homeless shelter and we plucked a hair from one of the dudes while he was sleeping. And we planted it and we watered it every day. We gave it the nutrients it needed to survive and we made sure it had plenty of sunlight. And then eventually that sprouted into our wonderful curly hair guitar player and singer. Our little Johnny was born. 
He was born. I love you, kiddo. <laughs> How we found Heather is actually another really funny story. So we live like, like my next door neighbor, Doug. He has a bunch of horses. And so one day we were walking next to like the pastures, trying to find like ideas for songs and just hoping to get inspired by the nature of and the beauty of it, honestly. We were walking by the stables and we just found this ginormous pile of like horse like like the largest pile of horse manure ever. We actually found Heather half developed with a base. Um, just sitting, laying right there, and you're just rolling around it. Yeah, positives of the St. Louis scene. I think there's a lot of different flavors in music in mm -hmm. in St. Louis, like so many different categories of bands that you can find. It's because it's so decentralized. Yeah, there's so many little pockets and subcultures. Yeah, everyone we've played with and been around has been very nice, very mm -hmm. easy to work with people. But that's still such like a niche subculture. Yeah, like, we yeah. have not seen a yeah. lot of this. We Saint haven't Louis even scene. met so many of like the cool people in St. Louis, even though everyone we worked with has been super cool and really yeah. fun to play with. We've done a lot of all the shows we've done have been really fun, especially meeting new bands. Because the thing is, every person in each band has their own network of cool friends. Because when you play a show with someone, you've already got so much in common with them that it's pretty easy to like network from there. Yeah. Because you really, you don't have people who don't care about music playing shows. I guess, I guess it being decentralized can also work as a negative too, because like, like you said, Jude, it, um, People aren't getting out there, like going to shows, mm -hmm. or they're only going to like specific people's shows. But it's like, go go look at all of it. Mm -hmm. Spotify isn't the end all be all. For yeah. Jude, I didn't say that. You don't have to be friends with the person to go to their show. Yeah. And if you go to like see random bands that are playing near you, you can like discover people. You can make good friends with the people in that band exactly. and the audience. Remember, um. Shout out, shout out Tyler if he's watching this. Oh yeah. Um, but I met him at a hazmat show at the Duck Room a while back, and it was just it was a really fun experience because we were just like dancing and having a good time together, and you hit it off pretty quick. Oh, he's a bro. He gives me and, coupons at Savers. Yeah, oh, yeah. Now he's like one of our good friends. Whenever we started working at Panera. He was friends with like the people there, yeah. and then we made friends with like Max and ja and then we just like met so many friends just because we went to the hazmat show and we're dancing, you know. That there time. is such a social aspect of the music scene that more just, people should experience. Mm -hmm. They want to broaden your horizons. Just go to shows. Everyone's so cool. Be hard pressed to find a uncool person there. If they are, nobody probably likes them anyway. <laughs> the thing I see is like people will be, will be really into a band and they'll be coming yeah. to their hometown and they won't see it. Yeah, that is kind of a weird thing is like, I feel like live music as an, as an art form has gotten more popular and less popular mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah. I feel like it's more of there's a smaller group of people who will go to every single show and make it their life's mission to just go and experience live music because they've had their awakening. And then like a lot of people just don't even really think about it. A lot of it's because tickets are expensive now too. Oh yeah. Which really sucks. It's terrible. Our tickets are ten dollars. Our tickets oh, are yeah. ten dollars. If we even have tickets. Which we usually don't. No, we've had tickets twice. Yeah. a song by myself um, it's, it usually starts with chords on whatever instrument I mean either guitar or synth basically but um, and then I kind of think of songs in like a full uh, every every piece of the puzzle so I kind of try to write the song around that uh, I have like drum and bass parts like try like in, in my head and then Lyrics always come last for me because 
And when we learn covers, um, it's pretty much as simple as we... Uh, we usually all learn it individually. Like, yeah. yeah. We just pick out a song and then we're like, know it by then, and then we come in and we we play it once, we're like, that sucked, and then we keep playing it, and eventually <laughs> we're like, that was better, yeah, yeah. 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 Can't help but love 9 Volt, huh? They've got this energy and love for music that permeates everything they do. Right now, I'm headed to see one of my personal favorite St. Louis groups perform, Atomic Junk Shop. They're a mix of classic rock, honky-tonk, and outlaw country that'll surely get anybody jamming to their music. After we see them play one of their classic tracks, I'm going to sit down with Aaron Perlett the main member, songwriter, and lead guitarist and vocalist of the group, and we're going to have a discussion about his unique story in music and his views on the St. Louis local music scene and why you should get out there. This song is called Lucky Sperm Club. <laughs> Beaver, when you turn 16, homemade khakis and no blue jeans. Small prick of the trust fund, member of the Lucky Sperm Club. I've always been really passionate about making music, um, but the problem was that I was never really capable. Ever since I was a teenager, I've loved, loved music. I fell in love with kind of the, I guess, what would be considered the classic rock era. But I never really took up playing music at all. And uh, I had kids, and they were taking piano lessons for their entire lives. In fact, this my wife uh, forced them to do uh, from about the age of four. And uh, I sat around every Sunday, and I watched them taking piano lessons. And um, I found it pissing me off more than anything else. I just thought to myself, you know, I I've always wanted to play guitar. I've always wanted to sing. Why am I not doing this? One day I asked their piano teacher, I said, hey, do you do guitar lessons too? And he said, well, I just hired a guy. And so uh, that was um, maybe six years ago and I was already in my mid forties. And uh, cause I'm an old son of a bitch. Less than a year later, I started composing music. I, I had stories to tell and um, those have changed throughout the year, the way I'm telling those stories. But um, this passion in me is really kind of overflowing. And so, you know, I started composing and then within maybe another six months, I put together, started putting together the pieces of a band and uh, started from there. You know, I think St. Louis has a, a pretty diverse and talented music scene um, that, that plays to kind of the Americana narrative that, um, that accompanies the Rust Belt, the Midwest, um, but, you know, you see a nice uh, diversity of whether it's Americana, whether it's funk or soul, um, whether it's metal or, uh, you know, people playing covers of, you know, classic rock band and blues. So there's a really interesting um, diversity across a pretty wide spectrum. And there's a lot of talent in St. Louis and in the Midwest in general. And I think that's kind of one of the biggest challenges of, of making it in music if you believe you're really going to make it and that is uh, there are so many talented people wherever you go I don't know if there's um, St. Louis bands that inspire us but there's St. Louis bands that I really respect 
and um, and like what they're doing or have done in the past. Um, you know, I, I'm have always been a big fan of Jay Farrar dating back to um, the Uncle Tupelo days, and now in Sunvolt. And uh, I think we aspire to to be like that um, to some degree. I think there's a lot of great bands that I could probably go on and on about great bands I'd like to see. I don't know if they influence us, but they're certainly ones that we aspire to be like. And I think probably Sunbolt is one of the more local acts that we would aspire to be like. You know, why do we create? It's a, it's a great question. Um, uh, for me personally, I, I like to um, I like to write stories um, and you know trying to tell a story in two verses a bridge and three choruses is um, can be challenging um, I tend to be a real um, direct type of songwriter like there's if you go read our song it's pretty clear what I'm trying to get at whereas some people try to be more euphemistic in doing so. Um, but I think I'm just trying to tell a good story. And honestly, I, I, more than anything, you know, we all make our art for an audience. And there's no better feeling than seeing someone in the audience when you're playing. Just kind of like getting into it and feeling a groove, feeling something. And as an artist, you can tell. You know, you can really tell when someone digs you what you're doing, and um, we're no different. We just uh, we want to have fun. We want to tell good stories, and ideally, we want those stories to resonate with people. I'm a prolific writer. I love just to write, and then I'll, I'll write songs, and I just store them on my laptop, and they just sit there. <clears throat> but the songs that really work are when I have a, a, a moment and something touches me like I was driving once and I heard the song uh, don't come home a drinking with loving on your mind by Loretta Lynn and I'm like wow I've, I've heard that so many times but it touched me because it's about late night booty calls and it reminded me of my problems with drinking and alcohol and the first I don't know 15 years of my marriage <laughs> and uh, and so I wrote the song in 10 minutes, uh, wrote a song in 10 minutes called Now She Is My Ex. It was 1967, and I wasn't born quite yet. Well, Miss Loretta Lynn was singing song. It was her first hit called Don't Come Home a Drinking. We love it on the old mind. All the way to number one. A hit for quiet sometime Was about an angry wife We fed up with her man We come to some morning every night Pretty well she can Growing up I heard that song At least a thousand times Never learned the lesson And sure pissed off my wife the bottom line is you either want to experience art or you don't and there's a variety of different art forms you can go experience but if music is it you have to go out and experience it and you've got to do it live because doing it live is a much more visceral experience than just listening to you know a song on Spotify or listening to a record or what have you so it's either you want to experience art or not, and whatever that art form might be, and get your ass out and do it. Fine. I'm just doing fine. I'm just doing fine. I'm just doing. And finally, we're bringing it all back home to where I first started in the music scene. We're going to be interviewing the two members of my band, Dylan Ponawaz on the drums and Cannon Steinmeier on guitar. 
But first, we have a very special musical presentation for you. So get with it. He was the first person I saw play music with his band. Uh, it was Peter, Paul, and Larry. They played at a lot of church picnics. And then Jude and Cannon in sixth grade started saying they wanted to start a band. So it was the time. <laughs> I think if I had to describe St. Louis's music scene, it would be all over the place. It's the first part, and then it's hard to find other musicians to that we click with. But like, there's, there are, not to say that there's a lot of, not a lot of places to play at, but there's a missing culture of music in St. Louis that's slowly creeping back. But it's kind of rough in the areas. Uh, playing in a band and being part of the St. Louis music scene is a good way that you can meet random people. And whether it's good or bad people, it's always entertaining. So. That's always good. <laughs> well, we both started playing folk music right when we started playing guitar. Because, uh, I mean, I had played guitar for a couple years before Dylan started, but we both played with his dad, like, every Thursday night. So we would all just be playing folk music, and, uh, like, you know, Bob Dylan, Simon Garfunkel, the Avett Brothers, stuff like that. And, all right, so St. Louis bands that have inspired me are uh, Liz X and Poet Soda, my dad's band. Check it out on Spotify. And the urge was kind of cool to see where St. Louis music was, like when they were doing their thing. Uh, we, we played with this band, uh, and it was a guy from St. Louis who had moved to Nashville, and he uh, formed a band, and they're really good. They were called The Medium. I think that was a really good, cool band. They inspired, like it, they inspired me because they formed together their own tour and just took it by car and just did their own thing. And they, you know, they're doing it all on their own with no help. You know, so that was really cool to see. Uh, it was cool to see that guy come back to St. Louis and he had all his friends there, like supporting him. If you want to get involved in the music scene in St. Louis, uh, the most important thing is to know is that there's a show every night somewhere. So no matter, like if, if you can go anywhere and you can see a live band pretty much at any, any place in St. Louis City uh, every single night. Most are free if it's at a bar. Most of its local bands are sub $20 to get in. So it's like every night there's something cool to do and a new sound to hear. created things like how my brain works I just wanted to have things under my name and be able to say I did that even if it's like you know building something like a shed in my uncle's backyard or something like that that's fun like I just want to build like do stuff you're inspired by artists you want to draw like them you're inspired by musicians you want to create music like them and you want to you know 
do what your inspirations do. I mean, alternative music is a pretty broad term in general, but I'd say that like what's unique to St. Louis music is it's always if it's guitar, it's always gonna be bluesy. Mainly like the alternative scenes are like shoegaze right now, and like a lot of like softer indie rock and stuff. But then there's a lot of experimental rap going on, and even like smaller rappers that are gigging as much as bands are now. So it's cool to see that. Too. We played gigs with rappers before as a band, and. That's pretty interesting to see because I don't think you would see that that often in the past. It's like it's like opening on Mystery Box. Like you go to the gig, it's like here you, we'll give you five dollars or a Mystery Box, and you open it. And it's just like two bands that aren't the same at all and are nowhere near the same as you. We play with like a full like school rock cover band along with uh, guys that are playing metal. But then halfway through their set, they start rapping Snoop Dogg. The audience is not all there to see the same thing, so it just, it, it's interesting to see. But like, that's also how you can get people wrapped. Yeah, because essentially it's like, you're here, you're listening to what is, you know, being played, and then there's always gonna be those people that hate it, and there's always gonna be those people that are like, man, that's pretty cool. And then you have m more people that like you, so that's the whole point of playing shows. I kind of like politics. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of times if I'm writing a song, it starts out where I'm just walking or at school or at work or at a party. But then I'll always just uh, have someone come to me in my head and then I start writing it. And then it either goes somewhere or it doesn't. So I always start with words first because it comes easier to me. Yeah, I'm kind of the opposite. I always start with like a riff or a lick or like a chord progression that I think sounds cool, which is normally always sounding similar to like the genre of music I'm listening to if like when I was really into like Weather Report and Wolf that goes Closer to that, or if I was close, like into the Smashing Pumpkins or stuff like that, you know, it's just like I'm taking away like whatever environment I'm in or whatever my head's listening to. I'm trying to create stuff like that. As a musician in a band, I know that uh, playing music is very different. Your, your live music is very different from your recorded studio music, and I feel like if you really enjoy a band and a musician, you should go out and see them and see what it compares to. Along with, if you've never heard a band before them seeing them play live is their more authentic sound so it's more true to their sound so go see bands support the kids support the kids support the not kids support the bands because you're the audience everyone enjoys music go experience it and like listening to albums is great and stuff just listening to a live band is way more authentic and way more pleasing to your brain you will not regret it So having talked to these three examples of gigging musicians, what's the takeaway? Sure, it's hard to know where to start in St. Louis's music scene as it is quite diverse and decentralized with many different subcultures to dive into, but these three hard-working examples of the do-it-yourself attitude are proof enough of the scene's magic. These bands have become reality, whether it be by childish whim or lifetime dream, and they've forged something valuable from these impulses like true alchemists. Your job here, having watched this whole thing, is to go out and see a show. Without an audience, these magical St. Louis bands can't thrive. When you see the scene take terrible blows like the loss of Mississippi Nights to the Luminaire Place Casino and the closing of FUBAR, which happened during the coronavirus lockdowns. Get up off the couch and go see these guys. They're waiting for you with open arms. Today could be the day you step out of the house and into St. Louis's rare local music scene. Buy the ticket, take the ride, and you won't ever look back.
on shows, right? And because they were like introverted swine, they would just push their buttons with their feet and they would just look at their shoes. And like, that's the thing, right? If people just don't get it. Like, look at your shoes, shoe gaze. <laughs>